You and your companions are tasked with slaying an unknown beast that has been wreaking havoc on the forest road between two towns. You and your group head into the woods to find this creature and make the road safer yet again. You come across a small camp off of the road into the woods that looks like it's been torn asunder. There are bedrolls torn to shreds, blood splatters all over the place, a clattering of blood-soaked weapons and tools. Investigating the campsite, you hear rustling in the bushes outside the camp. Out of the bush, you see a small black kitten. The kitten is jet black and has two tentacles sprouting out of its back. Around the camp, you see one, two, three more of these black cat creatures, but a lot larger. The tentacles on their backs are quivering, and as it happens, you see three more of these beasts appear with a slight shimmer to them surrounding you entirely. These are known as displacer beasts and look like they're on the hunt for food. Hello and welcome to Dungeon Deep Dive, where we talk about all things D&D, from monsters and their lore, to news updates and tips, and advice for anyone interested in Dungeons and Dragons and want to give it a try. In today's video, we're going over the lawful evil monstrosity that is the Displacer Beast. On par with trolls and maybe even beholders, Displacer Beasts have been a well-known staple in Dungeons and Dragons since the very beginning. They get their first mention in Dungeons and Dragons Supplement 1, Greyhawks. It states in the book that the Displacer Beast resembles that of a puma with six razor sharp clawed feet and two horned and barbed tentacles that sprout from the shoulders. They're pretty tall creatures that can grow to around 10 feet tall in height and grow to around 12 feet in length. They're carnivorous creatures that never hunt alone and hunt in packs of three or more. And interestingly enough, they seem to have a deep rivalry with Blink Dogs. Most of these beasts are extremely strong and fast, but there are some breeds that are more slender and thin and look slightly emaciated. Their eyes are a bright emerald green color that glow and radiate primal instincts. They're so radiant that even after the creature dies, the eyes still shine and are used by alchemists everywhere. Since Displacer Beasts hunt and live in packs, there are regular Displacer Beasts and there are Displacer Pack Lords that are in charge of the pack. Pack Lords are mutations of the regular Displacer Beasts that are more stronger and larger than your regular beasts. They are even slightly more intelligent that are said to be on the same level as humans, allowing them to lead the packs more efficiently. Another variant of a displacer beast is an umbral variant that exists mainly in the plane of shadows, but has on occasion been seen on the material plane. Even though the displacer beasts are primal hunters and predators, they're also killers and enjoy the chase of their prey, and sometimes kill just for sport, not for food. When they hunt for sport, they will play with their prey, keeping them alive and slowly whittle away at them until the, the displaced beast is ready to eat it again. Once they've slain their prey, they will use their strong tentacles to wrap around the corpse and drag it away to a safe and remote location to eat their food in peace. Despite them being naturally evil creatures, they never fight among themselves in a pack. They work together pretty well and share their food with each other equally. Since they do have six legs, they are extremely fast creatures and can easily catch up and keep pace with any prey that they've set their eyes on. Being masters of hunting and pack tactics, if a pack comes across a party of adventurers, they will still target the spellcasters first, knowing that they are easy prey and disable them before going head to head with the more armed enemies. With their super fast speed, they have the ability to dash between melee combatants, always working on the weaker members first and going for the stronger ones later on. But if the tables do seem to be turning against them, they are not afraid to count their losses and flee from a fight to fight another day. Like other types of cats, they are known to hunt in packs, but sometimes they do have to resort to hunting solo, but they will only hunt for smaller, easy creatures to ensure a kill when solo. Their preferred prey for hunting would be the more intelligent prey like humans, orcs, and goblins to chase and take down slowly. But their all-time favorite prey to hunt are creatures like bears, buffaloes, and their arch enemy, the Blink Dog. When a pack of displacer beasts find a place to call home, they quickly take their place at the top of the food chain, and have very little to fear from other creatures except trolls and maybe giants. When it comes to raising their young, the parents of the kittens separate themselves from the pride and raise their young until they grow enough to hunt and fend for themselves, and then go off to make their own pride. When they bear young, they tend to produce two to four kittens per litter. A newborn litter of displacer beasts are born with an already full set of sharp teeth and six legs, but do not develop their tentacles until they grow a little more. They instead start with little nubs on their back that will develop over time. While growing, the kittens are actually very playful and boisterous, and people tend to try to keep them as pets at this age for their playful nature. But once they mature and reach adult age, their playful nature quickly dissipates. It only takes a displacer beast four months to reach maturity, but they will still continue to grow. And after that, the parents then begin to teach their child how to hunt and kill. 
Once a child has mastered hunting prey and their tentacles and magical abilities are fully developed, they will then leave the outskirts of the pride and go make their own pride. Now moving on to the habitats, the displacer beasts tend to prefer deep forests and to call their hunting grounds with thick green foliage to hide and stalk their prey. Some are known to inhabit open plains and even mountainscapes and claim hidden caves as their homes to hide away if need be. Being extremely territorial creatures, they and their pride will guard and protect their territory with all they have if need be against anything that would threaten it. Inside the lair of a displacer beast will be a smattering of bones and horns from previous prey as well as any gear or trinkets that any unlucky travelers would have had on them when a displacer beast striked. There is a chance that you could encounter displacer beasts in the abyss if you're so unlucky to find yourself there in the first place. They mostly will be trained and kept as guards and tools by the drow priestesses who worship Lolth and call the demon web pits their home. Like we said earlier in the video, displacer beasts have a deep hatred for blink dogs and if a blink dog and displacer beast encounter each other, they will fight to the death no matter what trying to destroy the other. No one actually knows why they hate each other so much some seem to think that it's because of their morals being the complete polar opposite of each other while others theorize that it's because of their magical abilities being the opposite of each other many members of the unseelie court in the feywild use displacer beasts as guards and pets and in the fifth edition monster manual it states that the feywild is where the displacer beasts actually originated it states that they were bred to reinforce their ferocious hunting and predatory nature by hunting creatures like unicorns and other fantastical creatures that call the feywild their home displacer beasts do have an innate magic in them to bend light around them and make them harder to notice and make it seem that they are actually one to three feet from where they actually are this same ability gives them the ability to become resistant to all range attacks made on them and makes them exceptionally good at hiding. They have specialized nerves in their skin that give off molecular vibrations that are practically unnoticeable to the naked eye. These skills give it the ability to use its spikes at the end of the tentacles to show an exact replica of the displacer beast to throw off their prey from multiple directions. The only way you can really tell the real displacer beast from the fake is by the thorns on the tentacles. They'll have a slight blue glow on them to show the true displacer beast. Other beasts can see through the illusion, however, and will not fall prey to these tricks from other displacer beasts. And surprisingly enough, in third edition, they were given the ability to speak common if needed to. Their hides are valuable pieces of material which are used to create high sought after enchanted items like high quality hide armor and the more commonly known magic item cloak of displacement. Now that's their lore and history that we've covered. Let's go over what they have at their disposal during combat. Starting with a regular displacer beast, I feel they are kind of lackluster in 5th edition with their action as they can only get a multi attack with their tentacles. So I'm going to add in that they have an ability to bite and use a claw attack too. Starting with an AC of 13 and 8 to 5 hit points, they have a speed of 40, which is not surprising given that they have 6 legs and they have a challenge rating of 3. They have an ability called Avoidance, where the displacer beast is subjected to an effect that allows it to make a saving throw to take only half damage. Instead, it takes no damage if it succeeds on the saving throw, and only half damage if it fails, which is essentially an innate rogue uncanny dodge. It also gets the ability called Displacement, where the displacer beast projects a magical illusion that makes it appear to be standing near its actual location, causing attack rolls against it to have disadvantage, and if it is hit by an attack, the trait is disrupted until the end of its next turn. This trait is also disrupted while the displacer beast is incapacitated or has a speed of zero. Now for the actions in the 5e stat block, they're given a multi-attack with its tentacles but i'm going to change that to a multi-attack where it can make two attacks with its tentacles or two with its claws and one with its bite starting with the tentacles they have a plus six to hit and a reach of 10 feet and deal 1d6 plus 4 bludgeoning and 1d6 piercing damage and you know for fun let's add that if the creature is a medium or smaller creature they are grappled if the attack hits i feel like that makes sense for the added claw attacks i would say that it would have a plus 6 to hit and a 5 foot reach and it deals 1d8 plus 4 piercing damage and for the bite i would say it has a plus 6 to hit and a reach of 5 feet and it deals 1d4 slashing damage as well now if a displacer beast is a pack lord they are slightly stronger than your average displacer so let's look at the stack block for a pack lord too Starting with an AC of 14 and 115 hit pointers, they are some thick boys. They have a speed of 40 feet and I've given them a climbing speed of 30 feet because I feel like it would make sense for them being an ambush predator. 
They have the same avoidance and displacement abilities as their displace a kin variants, but I've also given them the keen smell that gives them advantage on perception checks that rely on smell. I've also given them pack tactics where the displacer beast has advantage on attack rolls against the creature if at least one of the displacer beast's allies is within five feet of the creature and the ally isn't incapacitated. I will say though this won't take effect if it's using its illusion because I feel like that could be a little bit strong only if it's with other displacers. For some added flavor, I've given the pack load the pounce ability where if the displacer beast moves at least 20 feet straight forward towards the target and then hits it with a claw attack on the same turn, the target must succeed on a DC 14 strength save or be knocked prone. And if the target is prone, the displacer beast can then use its rake ability as a bonus action. The rake ability lets the creature deal an additional 1d4 slashing damage with its claws on the prone creature. Now for the actions, it has a multi-attack where it can make two attacks with its tentacles and two with its claws and one with its bite. And the bite has a plus six to hit and a five foot reach and deals 1d8 plus four piercing damage and the claws have a plus six to hit with and deals 1d4 plus four slashing. Finally, for the tentacles, they have a plus six to hit with a reach of 10 feet and deals 1d6 plus four bludgeoning damage plus 1d6 piercing. And then the target is grappled and has to make a DC 14 strength save to break the grapple. I've actually really grown to love these guys from their lore and their abilities and we'll definitely be using them at some point in the future. The party you're playing with could encounter a displacer beast on their travels through the deep forest where when they set up for camp for a night, a pack sneaks up on the party and pounces at night. Or they could be an abandoned tower in the forest that you're sent to investigate where an evil wizard had called it their home and they have a pack of displacer beasts as guards for the tower. But that is going to be all I have for you guys today on displacer beasts. Thank you all for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and if there's anything that I've missed I would love to hear about it in the comments below. What monster should I cover next? Let me know in the comments below and I will add your comment at the end of the video. You can find links to all my socials down below to keep you up to date on the videos. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.